Hi, I want to begin this entry uh, with a correction of my father's tales. This is actually episode uh, eight. Yesterday, I, I said it was six. It was actually seven. So this is entry eight. But um, I want to talk about uh, a specific part of my father's life uh, having to do with music. Uh, it is early morning, and I am drinking my coffee. <coughs> Excuse me. And Gary has not made the scene <laughs> in here where I am recording. I'm not sure if he's up or not. It's a little bit later, but I'm still in my bathrobe as we continue to be in COVID-19 lockdown in April of 2020. Uh, I have a, a whole other entry that I want to do because it deserves an entry about my my father's uh, own interest in musicality in musical instruments. That's a whole other, that will be hopefully a whole other uh, entry that I will do. This one is uh, specifically about records, uh, his record collection. When I was very young, he had a an extensive uh, 78 RPM collection of, of great music, great music that he played and I listened to. I grew up with music in my life. Music is still huge in my psyche. And during this lockdown, I spent a lot of time listening to music. Gary and I have music on a lot ourselves I listen through my headphones so it's been with me my whole life but he had this wonderful uh, collection of RPM 78 RPM uh, music uh, 78 RPM records have a rich history very very rich history so if you want to know more about it look it up they were also called shellac records because of the of the shellac uh, they used on these records, and the actual recording process they used was interesting. It's it's very interesting. You can still get them in some children's records after they st kind of stopped recording. Major artists uh, would still be record children's albums would still be recorded in 78 RPM. I had some children's albums uh, when I was a little girl that. Uh, they bought for me uh, uh, to go along with books. and uh, But he had this great collection that he liked to play and I loved to listen to. Well, we moved uh, from the, the house where I was young, uh, very young. At, I was still young when we moved, but uh, my mother left them in a closet. I'm pretty sure my mother did it on purpose <laughs> because I don't think that she was a fan of the records. I don't know. She loved music, and my mother was a great dancer, and she loved to to dance and all that. But I think it was a storage thing. I think they got in her way, and I think it. She probably regretted doing that as time went on. But I'm. I feel pretty certain she didn't care if they came or not. And he was busy and didn't take time for them either during the move and when he realized they were gone it was too late he was he was very upset about it he really really was but when we lived in the house where he had those records he would do the coolest thing now my sister my older sister was older enough than me that when we were growing up it mattered the age difference mattered in the way that we grew up um, the the artist of her time were different, definitely different than the artist of my time as a as a teenager. And when we reach maturity, when I reach maturity, it didn't matter anymore. Um, we were you know like the same age together, but it, it mattered when we were younger. As we were growing up, we grew up separately, and we would say that it was almost like growing up as only children because of the, because of that age difference that does matter when you're growing up. So, when she was a teenager, I was a little girl playing, <laughs> even though I loved music. So he would stop at this record store. Back in the day, they had real record stores that. Uh, 
well, they continued to, to have record stores, but when she was a teenager, they had the kind where you could go in the rooms and the department stores had sections of record departments where you could go in, like you see in the movies, and really play sample records to see if you wanted to buy the record, if you liked it or not. Uh, but he would stop every, back, just like now, records would drop on a certain day of the week, and he would stop at that record store and buy her the records that she was looking forward to. And they, the 45s, 45 RPMs, and they would come in cool uh, slip covers, you know, uh, jacket covers, rather. Uh, and they, and some of them were, if she, if, if her, if her, son had them now they would be very very valuable uh, records but he loved doing that for her and once again it was one of those things where I looking on as a as the younger sibling couldn't wait until that would be me that he would be doing that for and and that never came to pass <laughs> as time went on I did I would buy my own records at this place called Murphy's at a, a shopping center called Seminary South which I digress on that, but she wanted a stereo. She had, you know, we had a record player, but she wanted a stereo. And my dad, whenever you wanted something, if it was in his power to, to, to get it for you, he would. But what he wanted to do for her and did begin to do for her was to build her a stereo. And he uh, began the construction of the record cabinet. And I'm sure it was a matter of funding and finding the funds to my mother didn't work. It was a, a we were a one income family, and so he had the the, the, the structure partially built. Uh, the front wasn't complete yet. It had he had the turntable and he had a couple of speakers in it, but he had left room for I think a radio a, a setup and then a, a, a an area for storage, and he made it out of some kind of wood. I don't know what it was, but she was playing it, and she, you know, she used it, and I thought it was the coolest thing ever, even though it wasn't finished. It wasn't painted. It was the raw wood color, and it didn't have the front. He left the front to, I guess, enclosed with fabric like you do on a stereo, but as I've said before, he could really, <laughs> he could really almost do anything like that, and so, uh, here was here was the you know the uh, stereo under construction for my older sister definitely not it was not for me but uh, she had graduated high school and had gotten a job and <laughs> she bought her own stereo before he could get it finished and it never it never was finished her stereo was lovely and I loved it and played it but. I always wondered what he did with with that because I never did know what he did with the the great unfinished stereo caper. I, I never did hear anything about it. No comments were made or anything. But then uh, fast forward many years later, I'm collecting records and of my own and going through all of that and. I came home from school one day, and in the I had a record player in my room, and came home and played records uh, uh, always. Never really cared for too much watching of television. Uh, rather be in my room. Actually, I was a dancer. I loved dance. Always took a lot of dance, and so I would be in there practicing dance in my room with music. And I'm sure using a brush for a microphone. <laughs> so when lip sync to this to the great music that I had, but uh, I came home and here was this giant stereo in the living room, and we we saw that the house that we had at, at that time when I was a teenager. You they didn't want us coming in the front door. They don't except for guests because the carpet was white, <laughs> and and so we would come in what the utility room door and come in because that was tile, and you take your shoes off, and. Uh, but anyway, he ushered me in to the living room. There was this giant stereo uh, that he had a lot of his records in, because he still continued to buy music, which, as I said, I, I still have. I think I said it in another one of these podcasts. Uh, maybe that was my Pammy's Chit Chat podcast, but had his. Uh, I still have his uh, Rhapsody in Blue uh, 33 
my 33 RPM record. But I wish that I had his 38, I mean his 78 RPM record collection, and he wished he had it too, <laughs> but, he, but he didn't. But he, I guess he got the jump on me getting my own stereo because he bought the stereo. And of course, the whole family, anyone, anyone guessed, whoever could use it, but uh, he bought that and, and ushered me in to show me the great stereo. And and then he built, He once he bought that stereo, then he ran uh, up through the attic into each room of, the, of all the bedrooms and the den and kitchen and, and the, every room except the living room where the stereo was. He ran speakers into all the rooms and uh, the speaker in my bedroom, all of them were flush with the wall. He cut holes and made them flush uh, with the wall and then he trimmed it out like it was, you know, it was built in and you controlled it from from there and it had a, a cloth cover they were it was about the size of a of a picture frame maybe a, a, an eight by ten turned horizontal uh, maybe about that size of a of a speaker maybe a little bit bigger than that but he also at that same time installed uh, inter, an intercom system into uh, into the rooms loved the speaker system but what I didn't love was the intercom because my I'm not a morning person and my mother was a morning person but she would get on that intercom and to wake me up and it was like this rise and shine shine this little song that she would sing it's like thanks a lot Dave for <laughs> for the intercom but I always thought about it because what I would do again like I am now I was this huge night owl and I would uh put music on in the living room and you could stack up the player that Gary and I have now is a is for albums or for music for vinyl is a one record at a time system the stereo that that we had you could stack them up and they could play for hours <laughs> you know just one after another and I would load that up and I would even though I had to go to school these are my high school years uh, not junior high uh, but and uh, I would take a bath about 11 o'clock at night. And once I let the tub overflow, my parents were incredible, <laughs> incredible, because they turned it on and I got on the phone and let it run and it overflowed and I had kind of a mess to clean up. And they let me do it. <laughs> but the thing that, was, that I always thought was completely patient of them, because my dad had to go to bed early because he went to work early. And... Uh, even though you, they would turn down the speaker in their room all the way, you could still, there was just this slight, you know how bass is really hard to to tune out completely. It'll, you'll still get that bump, 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 bump. And I always love bass. I still do. My headphones, I, I can't have headphones unless they're very bassy. And I know that's not an equal way. My dad liked the, the settings to be equalized. Bass and, and treble and all of the all of it to be not me ramp up that bass, so you could always hear the you know the bump 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 on the speaker and he never they never my mother either never said anything it's like you know and it would be all you know for hours <laughs> playing I guess they by the time I was at that age they'd been through it all and <laughs> tuned it out but I have a lot more to talk about. Uh, about my dad and actual music in my life as a as a young girl and the music that not just on vinyl but the real music that he brought into the into our lives and the musical instruments not that it impacted me uh, which I will I will talk about myself in piano which amounted to a whole lot of nothing but he brought exposed me to to music my whole life and I had to talk about the the great 78 collection of records that he had and what how great they're fragile uh, I think they I don't know that they would even be uh, you would even be able to play them because those types of records were pressed that goes back to the very late 
1800s, when, if I'm not mistaken, when they began to press those uh, RPMs, and, they went, and it went all the way through the 50s uh, with, with uh, that speed, a 78 speed. The history of, of uh, vinyl is really interesting, and, and the history of 78, and how they first, the artist first would get their voices onto those records is very interesting. But it was just one more aspect of my dad and in his life and all the just the variety of the man that he was. Just one more entry into my father's tales. <laughs>